Hello and welcome to this iMesh tutorial. So today I'm going to be doing an exterior project with you guys and it's going to look something like this. Now this exterior project has been one of probably one of the most requested tutorials that I've had since starting this channel. So I'm finally glad to finally have one made for you guys and it's going to cover some basic concepts which you should try to take forward to your other exterior projects. But do bear in mind that exterior projects are on the totally other side of the spectrum compared to interior projects. Because in an interior space it's very confined and if there's something outside the window that you don't want to show, you can just put a curtain. But being an exterior project, you're kind of open to the, all the elements. So you kind of have to take a lot more into consideration and try to learn how to manage all of these different things. For example, if it's in an urban landscape, you're gonna to have to contend with all the other buildings surrounding this particular building. And how do you manage that? So this one's gonna be in a hillside landscape, which I think is also quite aesthetically pleasing. So I thought this would be, this would be a nice place to start. And because we are iMesh and you know these tutorials wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the thanks to our exclusive subscribers, they are helping us to fund these particular videos anyway. So I do want to do a little bit of a ad segment. Right then, so what is iMesh? So iMesh, we make some high quality assets for architecture visualization, but why should you pay for high quality assets when there are many other free resources online? Well, good question. Yeah, so here at iMesh, we've been doing this about four and a half years or so, and we've created 1,200 assets. So you can kind of guess that by the time we have made 1,200 assets, that our assets are gonna start coming out pretty good, I, I would hope. Otherwise, I need to restart my career. Now, so as an example, I use 3D made beds in um, actual my ArcViz work, and I kind of know what the beds are which I want to create. And as I've been using Marvelous, Desi Marvelous Designer for a very long time now, I kind of have a standard of bed which I try to aim for. Whereas if there's somebody who's just doing it as a hobby, they want to just make a bed, they might put it up for free because, you know, they don't care they might not necessarily have the same level of standards as we do. Whereas every single bed that I make, I really try to make sure that it's better than better. I, I really make sure that my bed is better than before. <laughs> uh, so, so that you guys can get the benefit of me getting better. <laughs> Now I'm not trying to knock the people who do make some free assets and they upload them for free because there are some freaking amazing things out there which I have used myself many times. But if you want to sign up for a library and you want to just make sure that every single one is gonna be to the quality that you expect, then that is when paying for, paying for models can have a benefit. So if you're looking to start your ArcViz career and you need some assets, then I would highly recommend iMesh uh, because we have 1,200 assets. We make sure that every single one is gonna be hitting the quality that we would expect ourselves. And you know that every single one that you download is gonna be to that level. Um, and we are incredibly cheap uh, because we are $99 for 1,200 assets, which means that it's uh, about eight cents per model. Um, I think we need to increase our price. And not only that, if you stay subscribed for the whole year for the $99, we are constantly releasing new assets. So by the end of the year, you'll have about 1,600 1, assets to download. So yeah, um, I, <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> Okay, and if you have iMesh exclusive, you can follow along this tutorial exactly because I will be using iMesh exclusive assets, but that's not completely necessary. I'm just gonna go over the key concepts for each point, and then you can find the assets that you think fit this maybe better to whatever scene you wanna create. This cabin will also be uploaded to iMesh exclusive, but if you don't wanna have iMesh exclusive, then that's no problem. You can create this quite sim in a quite simple way. You basically could start off with, uh, have I still got this here? Basically start off with a corrugated Metal, which is just a plane, which is extruded out, and then with an array modifier, and then you know you, you can just create the shape that you want. I'll just make sh just make sure that it is to the correct scale, um, and you, then you won't have any problems. And the good thing is that because this is going to be quite far away from the camera in the final render, the level of detail is not going to be completely necessary. So you can just cr create a rough kind of shape, and it should look fine. Um, but this tutorial is not going to go in so much detail about the building. Or itself um, because I'm gonna go over the other concepts involved such as the landscape uh, how to how to frame the picture and all these kind of other things um, but I will try to start doing more tutorials on actual building construction because building a cabin to a multi-story building to a normal house they all have a very similar fundamental but the way to approach it is gonna be quite different so I'm gonna save that for another tutorial but for now I'm just gonna start with this cabin Okay, so the first thing to do is just create a very rough building shape or drop in this building from iMesh uh, and then go into the camera 
and what I first did was try to get a rough frame that I, which I quite liked, which involved setting the resolution to something like this, which got this nice frame. First thing I did was just make sure I go and make sure my pass per two is set to one because I do find that when you can actually see what is outside the frame, it's a little bit distracting. So I just made sure I did this. And then what I basically did, because this is a completely free render, um, I just flew around until I found a frame which I liked. So this is basically the frame which I ended up with because I quite liked the fact that I was kind of looking up to the camera. I also then made sure that my camera, I clicked on my camera and went over to here and made sure that it's still at 90 degrees. I made sure it wasn't at some funny angle, um, but that did also mean that I needed to make sure that I added a Y shift, which then made the put it into the middle of the frame, which I wanted. This basically means that all the lines will continue to stay straight in the frame and you won't have any wonky edges, which can make the image feel a little bit warped or a little bit bent, uh, but having straight lines allows for a much more pleasing image. Okay, so the next thing is actually to add the ground. All I did was just click onto the bottom of the, of the object and go and add a mesh, and then I can scale this all the way up. If you do scale this up, make sure you do do control A and apply the scale. Sorry, I've just turned on screencast keys so we can actually follow along. So if you do scale this up, make sure you do do control A and apply the scale. Okay, so something like this will be fine. And then all I did was just go into edit, apply the scale, go into edit mode and do control R and then add a bunch of lines like this. And also same this way, just something like this. Okay, so now that you have all of these faces, what I'm gonna do is just select all of these faces in the middle here, and then I'm just gonna press H. And now we've hidden these faces because that means that if we turn on proportional editing or you can press O, if we move any faces around, if we go back into object mode, we'll see that these faces are still going to be in the place that they were. So that's not going to be affected. So you can always guarantee that your object is going to be roughly flat against the ground. So let's bring this down. Over here, I've gone into camera view so that I can kind of see how this is going to look in the end. And one thing I want to do is just make sure that this ground is roughly where my camera is. So the, the camera is going to be close to the ground. And then I also wanted to have a hill in the background. So just use the mouse wheel to scroll up to move this around. And I did something like this. And then in the middle, I wanted there to be a little bit of a valley so that there is a foreground, a midground, and then the background. So I'm gonna pull this, this one down. And that's roughly what I did here. And I'm gonna pull these ones up. And, and then I basically played with this until I got a shape which I liked. Okay, and what I ended up with was basically a shape like this. So I basically had the camera which can see up to about here, then it dips down and then it goes up again for the house and then there's a nice hill in the background. So this is the rough kind of shape that I had in the end and that was all simply by doing proportional editing. Okay, so the next thing I did was actually just add a very, very simple shader for the grass. It's literally just a diffuse and it doesn't really matter that it's tiling because we will be covering it with grass anyway. But the reason why I wanted to have some sort of material on the bottom, that if there is some grass here, but there is a gap, that we, we'll, that we will actually see something a bit more natural than just nothing. But the base material doesn't really matter. I just wanted something a little bit ground, brown and a little bit green. Um, and then I guess what we can do now is actually start working on some lighting. So what I first did was actually set um, a HDRI. So using the iMesh Asset Manager, I just went into my HDRIs and then I just found one which I liked. And in this particular case, I used this one here, Waterbuck Trail, and I'm just gonna be using a 2K version because it can render a lot faster and it's not important, we won't be seeing it anyway. And that's basically what I had. And that's basically that shader. Um, the next thing I want to do was something a little bit different. And this is quite a cool technique, which I think is very underused because what blocks the sun? The clouds. And what is very hard for the HDRIs to pick up? The shadows from the clouds. So we can create our own shadows for the clouds. So all I did to, to create that was I went into mesh and I created a mesh like this and I moved over the whole space and then I made a new material. Okay, so what I did was make this shader here. So it was basically a noise texture. You can just do shift A, search, and just type in noise texture to get it up here. And then you could just type in the numbers which I've got here. And I applied that to the whole shape. I then used a color ramp to pull in the shadows like this so that the shadows created by the clouds would be a little bit sharper. I then also added a mapping node. All these can all be found by doing shift eight and searching. And then you can just plug these into here and, and and do whatever you like. You can either use the UV texture or you can just use generated, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so this is basically the no setup which I have. And these all go into the alpha. So that creates some holes which we can then which we can then see through to the other side. 
Um, and what effect does that do? So if I go back, now if I add a sunlight, uh, if I just do A and add a sun, you can, if you want to use uh, the world shader to create your own sun here, you find, but I had a little bit more play here. So I added the sun and I basically just had this strength of uh, the color temperature set to um, 4,800 with just one like this. And if we go back into here, we can see what effect this creates. So look at that. We got some shadows from the clouds and you can imagine if we go to here, uh, this object here, and then if we move this along, you can see how it creates some really nice rolling clouds uh, over the over the field, which I think is un underused in architectural visualization. So if you want to use that technique, go crazy. Uh, but we don't actually want to see this. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to hide it from everything apart from shadow. Um, I think. Why can I see it now, but I cannot see it if I do that? That's strange. Anyway, um, that is kind of what I ended up with. But what is quite funny with this particular render is that I didn't, I wasn't actually able to see this too much anyway because there was so much fog and it was a cloudy day. So I did think that it wasn't necessarily 100% physically accurate, but I was thinking that maybe it's going to be maybe either late evening or early morning and there's a fog either rolling in or, or leaving and there's going to be starting to be some breaks in the cloud or the fog where the sun is starting to break through. And it did add some nice variation to the to the lighting, just very subtly, and it wasn't too intense, which was a very nice effect, which I quite liked. So if you want to use this, go either go crazy or don't go crazy, or just use it very subtly. Um, you can also adjust these here to adjust how strong you want the shadows to be. But I think that the effect that I have here is quite nice, and that adds a, quite a realistic shadow effect. The next thing I did was actually add the fog. And that's also quite simple. So what I did was just add a cube, just scale this up and scale this uh, S shift Z to scale it on the Z axis. I just made sure that it covered all of my, at least all of the ground and everything that's in going to be set inside here. And then what you can just do is add a node setup. So I'm going to go here and add a new node setup. I'm going to get rid of this and just do a search for a volume, principled volume. And then I basically added these settings here. So what I had was a emission strength of 0.001, which added a little bit of brightness to it. I then added um, these color ramps here. So if I just go into here, just to show you what it kind of looks like. Uh, if I go to this one here. Oh, the, how I'm making this go to the end is I'm using the add-on uh, node wrangler. This one here, if you just enable that one. And then if you just hold down shift and control, you can then automatically pull this one to the end and see how that previews. So all I did was create a rough shape like that and then I used the color ramp to tighten up the values a little bit and uh, and then I used the multiply to make it a little bit darker and then plug that into here. So if I try and show you how that roughly looks, so this is kind of the fog in this. If I put this to one, you can see that it also gets stronger. If I put this to 10, it gets even stronger. But I wanted this to be quite a subtle effect because I didn't want the sun and the fog to be contending too much together. So I just put a really low value and and that was quite nice. In post-production, I did actually get rid of this fog a little bit more because I think it was a little bit too strong. But in the actual render, this is roughly how it looks. And now we can see the mood that we're starting to get with this scene. Okay, so now we're going to hit the first problem, which is adding grass. And you can kind of see already that I've added some grass with a particle system and we're hitting instantly the first problem that the viewport is incredibly slow. I'm trying to move this now and nothing is happening. And that is going to be a common theme that you will have with exterior renders unless you know how to manage it. So here, for example, if you do add a particle system, just turn it off in the viewport until you're ready to render. If you are, if you want to, you can also use geometry nodes and geometry nodes does also have a method of scattering lots of objects um, over a big distance. But in this particular scene, I will be using scatter. Now scatter is an incredible piece of software. It does actually create particle systems, but it basically is particle systems on steroids and it creates presets for you with already made grass packs. Now I couldn't get the grass packs to work with me because I think with Blender 3.0, it is actually in a, a pre-release version and I couldn't get it to work, but that was no problem. What I did was actually just grab some grass, which was actually from a 
a scatter pack already and I just brought these into my scene and they're basically just loads of planes with just some some grass uh, some different types of grass that I quite liked from various different packs I believe and then I selected the plane which I wanted to, to scatter I click this one here this one here and then I chose uh, the scatter type and this one looked quite funky and then I selected all the grass that I wanted to scatter and then I chose scatter objects now it has said that there is automatically a high amount of scatter objects so it has hidden them which is already quite nice now what we can do is go down here and click display as and I'm going to set this to a point cloud now what I can do is also um, click reveal near camera so that also shows some particle systems which are going to be near the camera and then what I can do here is also go up to here and now click view and now you can see that now this is incredibly fluid and a lot easier to manage. Um, you can also increase the distance here to be 15 and now we can go into the camera view and now we can see that the where this seat where this starts and this is incredibly helpful for trying to manage things that are close to the scene but not only that we can also go to here and click camera optimization so we you know we don't need any of this stuff which is incredible I thank the guy that created that created this I've wanted this for blender for such a long time because exterior stuff is incredibly hard to manage um, the next thing I want to do was also just increase the particle density maybe try 30 um, just until I can fill up this whole space here I think maybe I went I think I went up to 50 okay then I played with the settings a little bit more and I increased the density in certain areas um, if you do have the biome packs then this will work completely automatically for you but I ended up with this setting and the beauty with scatter is that if I now go into rendered view it will then render in all of the objects for you and you won't just have this point cloud which is actually incredible. Um, I think that, that that is a huge improvement to the particle system. And now we can kind of see that this whole area is filled with grass. You can see that the viewport is kind of lagging because there is so many objects that it's trying to render. But as soon as I go back to solid view, it will then be nice and fluid again and I can move around the scene. Okay, and if you want to see the exact settings, I've got particle systems 50 here and these here. So that's going to be good for this kind of shape. Right, and about this part of the video, I want to talk about a very important concept, and that is the idea of foreground, midground, and background. I think I've talked about it in this past with other tutorials as well, but this is a very important part of architecture visualization because the idea is that you can have a foreground and you can have you can tell a story in the foreground, you can tell a different story in the midground, and another story in the background. So the the foreground is always going to be a little bit more personal, and you can add any kind of items you want there to be make it a nice personal space or for example you can have a a rabbit running out of a hill or you can have somebody who is ha holding a balloon and they let go the balloon go or or something quite personal to the viewer um, because they are the camera essentially and then the midground can be anything that could be the actual building itself and that will actually tell the story of the building and then the background is where the whole setting is taking place so there are some very important concepts now I'm going to show you a company and they make some incredible renders that all the renders are just ugh. okay so let's just go to Google and type in mir.no and if you haven't heard of this company before I highly recommend you just look through all of their work because they make some incredible renders so an example the foreground the midground and then the background and they have this kind of concept all the time. The foreground is telling some sort of story, the midground, and then the background. Um, a lot of their a lot of their objects actually have the um, the main building of focus actually in the background because it's large enough and it can tell its own story in the back there. But all of these projects are actually incredible, and they do a lot of work with merging photographs into uh, the foreground, of course. But every single one is actually beautiful and. Um, so yeah, check out these guys and you will also be very impressed. Okay, so we're gonna use that concept here. So what we have here is we have a foreground, a midground, and a background, and we can add some trees and things here and a little bit of foliage, and then we can add, in this particular case, I added a, a, um, a character, um, but you can add, this character can be anything. It, it doesn't even need to be a character, but it could also be footprints left by a character. What we can also add is even even maybe a flamingo here. So if we apply, if we add this flamingo, and put this one into the into the foreground, then that could actually be a really funny uh, contrast to such a serious render. So if you can see here, it's actually quite a funny contrast uh, to such a serious render having something like this that's almost like a joke, uh, like taking the mick off the render itself. 
So use this space to, to build any kind of story that you want to tell. But in this particular project, what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna use some iMesh uh, foliage that we have here. So, so we've got some plants and uh, we also have some some hedges and things. So I, I'd use something like this and I just basically uh, appended all of these in until I found a place which I which I thought they worked quite well. Um, I quite like the idea that it felt like we're sitting in a forest, looking out of the forest towards this person. So it's also ideal to add some add some trees to the background. And okay, and if you're using the iMesh trees, they do actually come with an LOD version, which you can then use with the Lodify plugin. If you go here, and this is a free plugin called Lodify. If you just search for it on Google, you'll find it. And that allows you to then change how this looks in the viewport. So now we can have many, many more trees, um, but the tree density is actually only 20,000 faces ver versus this one, which will be almost a million. So this allows you to scatter a lot more trees around the scene. So if I click this one here, you can then imagine how much faster this will be to work. But then when you actually go to do the final render, the full tree will actually render. In this particular case, I'm not going to be adding too many trees, so I'm just going to be making it to the full quality so I can actually see how it's going to look. So the kind of thing I did with the trees is try to create some sort of um, some canopy above the camera. So I try to arrange a tree roughly so that I just about see the branches and and I just played with that until I found something that I quite liked. Right, so this is how I, how it ended up. I ended up with having a tree here, which adds a nice little shade here. I added another one here, and then I added some trees into the background over here. And what this does is it creates a nice frame and it does make it feel like we're sitting in the woods looking out. And I added some some these hedges here, which I showed you earlier. And I also added some of these plant pots, which which we have. But they are in pots. But how to get rid of the pots is you, you can either go into edit mode and delete the pots from there, or you can just push them into the ground and you'll never see them. So something like that. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. Um, but to finish my foreground, I'm going to add a character. I actually thought that a person looking out wearing a nice colored jacket would actually look quite nice um, as a nice contrast to this scene. Okay, so the first thing I did was create a person using Make Human and I thought that a younger girl would look fit quite well as if she has gone wandering the woods alone and there's some story to tell there. So I used Make Human to create a very quick uh, female kind of character um, and before moving into Marvelous Designer. Okay, the next thing I did was go to Marvelous Designer and get a jacket and start putting it onto this person. Um, I think I went the long hard route of actually applying these clothes to this avatar, but never mind, it worked in the end. Okay, the next thing I did was get some CCO wellies from Blendspot from this guy. So thank you very much to GRS for creating this for us. Okay, then I imported the Marvelous Designer jacket and trousers and I added a nice uh, glossy material because I thought that would look pretty cool. And it's probably one of the easier ways instead of worrying about fabrics and stuff. I think that when things are reflective, they always look pretty realistic in 3D anyway. So once I had fit uh, the clothes to the person, it was then task was actually to fit the wellies. So I used the feet as a rough guide to place them into the area where they needed to be. And then I used proportional editing uh, to move the fabrics to make it look like they're getting placed inside of the welly um, and then place the other one to the other foot and basically just did that and once the welly was in the roughly the place where it needed to be I was then able to delete that foot because we won't see it anyway um, but this actually looked ended up turning out pretty good um, and it did actually look like the trousers were going into the welly so that was a success and then I just played with the materials a little bit I gave the trousers some nice black material and made the wellies a kind of a similar color to the jacket Okay, and then once I have created that person, I just dropped her into the scene and I just placed her roughly into the place where I thought would look quite nice. Um, maybe I would have, I could have actually moved her a little bit further over so it follows a bit more the rule of thirds, but never mind, it ended up being in this place here. Now I will actually put this person up for free on in the description because I didn't want to put her as part of iMesh exclusive because it was a little bit rough around the edges and not kind of the quality which I would like. So I'll just offer this person for free um, and also she, doesn't have eyes so uh, so if you want to have this person just in the background or something then I'll upload this for you guys right so the next thing I wanted to do was actually add the rocks and things and at iMesh we don't yet have any uh, kind of rocks and things like this so but there is an incredible resource called Quixel Megascans and if you have mega scans, what it allows you to do is just find a, a block which you like, and then you can just export it straight away to Blender. Once you import it, it imports something like this, and it's just something like this, but it's already textured and it already looks amazing. So if I just go to render view, you'll be able to see how nice this looks. So you can imagine how quickly and easy it will be to find these rocks and to place it into a place which you want to use it. 
put it in roughly the area and just put it into the grass something like that I think it was actually placed something like this so yeah if you just place it into the grass it will look like there's a nice clean transition between them and then I basically just went through the bridge and just found some nice ones which I liked and then dropped them all into the scene okay and they look something like this so I just added this one here I added this one here so there's something poking up between the building as if it kind of continues and then this one over here as if uh, it's the the start of the the forest I also added a couple of little ones in the foreground here which had some nice rocks which kind of broke up the scene a little bit and they also hid the plant pots anyway so so that worked out quite well okay then the next thing that we should do is actually just add a plain light I just added a got a plane like this and these settings work quite well with the power of a thousand I wanted it to be quite powerful to kind of make it look like there's a lot of light coming from out here um, you can then add some more lights in here if you wanted to like one coming out of these bits if you wanted some more glow here but in general this kind of worked out perfectly fine for our scene right so I think at this point we're kind of ready for the actual render setting so let's go over to here um, I actually set this to CPU because it was refusing to render on my GPU um, it wasn't the actual standard um, GPU running out of RAM error message it was something else which I couldn't be bothered to look into but if you if you can render it on GPU then that's even better I set the noise threshold to 0.0, .0 one with a 250 as the max samples I then also set the passes to 24 for all of them um, I don't think it's completely necessary to go this high but I th that's just what I ended up with and that is probably fine for that and then I went into uh, these settings here I wanted to render it out as a TIFF in 16 bits so I have the most amount of play in the post-production and then in the render passes I just enabled all of these so I, I enabled glossy uh, direct I probably don't need indirect actually uh, denoising data um, and also you can turn on the crypto mat object and material which is quite useful a little bit later so uh, those are the ones I set here and then I go to the compositor and this is basically how it looks um, so this is going to be the main pass I then ran the glossy direct into a denoiser as well and then also did the same thing for the ambient occlusion so I wanted to just denoise all of them quite nicely so that's what I did here I should have added a file output node to automatically output all of my passes which I've done in, in a previous tutorial but um, at the time of rendering this I didn't actually do this I just wanted to kind of render it and save each pass out if I actually needed it so that's basically what I did here um, but I'm not going to go into too much detail about crypto mat and these things here because I did do talk about that in my previous tutorial but if you do have any questions then do let me know but I just use this to create some masks and yeah then that rendered and I'll show you the passes that it saved out okay and then this is the passes that I saved out so I've got the exterior um, just the normal color um, I then have a mask for the actual cabin I then have the ambient occlusion which is also looks quite nice as a um, as a clay render and then have the glossy direct which adds some sh shows the highlights in all the objects and I then have a mask for just the grass and then a mask for just these objects here so with these masks saved out oh make sure you do remember to also go to film and set it to transparent so yeah that's probably it I'm gonna move now over to Photoshop and work with these render passes okay so now we're gonna talk about Photoshop and I think you can do most that most of this stuff in affinity photo but in this Photoshop tutorial I'm gonna go into this into a little bit more detail than I have in previous tutorials so if I do breeze over anything then do let me know and I'll, I'll help you guys out so the first thing I did was just drag in my render passes here so I've got these render passes I just dropped these one here what I'm gonna do is actually drop in all of these oops I'm gonna drop in all of these because they might be quite useful I don't think I actually use this AO in the end uh, but what I'm gonna do is just make um, these layers so drop them all in and now I'm gonna organize them a little bit so what I want to do is create a layer which is gonna be main render I'm gonna create another layer here another group sorry called masks and then I'm gonna make another one called adjustments and then I'm gonna make another one called background background right I'm gonna put the background at the bottom because that's gonna be in the background and the main render is gonna go into this one you can also right click on the eye to set a certain color uh, just choose any color but it helps to visually see differences right so now we have the masks so I'm gonna gra grab these masks which are basically just these outputs here so each one is gonna be its own image right 
So I'm gonna, yeah, sorry, grab these and put these into masks and they basically just look like this and we're able to use them as masks. <laughs> and then we have this, this gloss one here, which I'll show you what I do with it in a bit. Uh, but the first thing I wanna do is make, get this main render and set it to a smart object. And then I'm gonna do the camera raw filter. And this is gonna be the most important step. So I'm gonna go here, go filter and camera raw filter. Right, and then what you're, what you're presented with is a series of things that you can adjust. And I recommend that you just start at the top and you work, all, work your way all the way down. So what I've basically just done, I've just actually copied the previous settings which I had from the previous project just so that I have the exact same settings and I'm just gonna talk you through them all as I go down. So I wanted this to be a little bit brighter so I just increased the brightness, increased the, the contrast and then I adjusted the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. I just recommend you just slide each one along until you find a setting which works for you quite nicely and these are the ones which I think worked quite nicely. But if you're not too sure what these ones do, then I do recommend you just leave these at zero and we'll go over the curves in a second, which is a little bit easier to understand. Right, and then I just use the, the texture to increase the detail because on the grass it looks really nice and really pops out. I then also de use the dehaze because I thought there was too much fog and it literally removes the fog. So <laughs> I use that a little bit and then I decrease the vibrance because I thought that thought it was just a bit too Colourful. Uh, vibrance isn't the same as saturation. I just find that vibrance is also often a little bit softer and a bit easier to use. So let's go back to what setting we had. Um, I do recommend you go to Pixel, I think he's called Pixel Perfect on YouTube, and he has a tutorial about how these work. So I recommend you check that out. And that's basically it for that one. Then I moved to curves. So as I said, this one is a little bit easier to understand than uh, this one. and so I went over to curves and then you can just adjust these how you like. So the highlights, I wanted the highlights to be brought down. I thought that there was a bit too much brightness in here um, and then you can adjust the lightness. I also I generally find that lights is kind of the overall brightness of the image, um, like for the main part of the image. So if I brighten that, the main parts of the image are gonna be brighter. So I thought something like that worked. The, the darks, I thought that the dark areas such as in here were a little bit too dark so I just boosted them a little bit and the shadows are going to be like the complete blacks and I wanted to pull that in a little bit just to make a little bit more contrast. Right uh, moving along uh, a little bit of sharpening never hurt anybody so let's just put this up to here and I just noticed that there's some denoising artifacts here so if I was to re-render this I would probably render this at a bit higher samples maybe 500 to a thousand but these look a bit it looks fine from this distance, so never mind, but you can actually see. Yeah, anyway, uh, so a little bit of sharpening is good. Then the color mixer, and this one is, I think I mentioned this before, one of my most favorite panels because it really lays out for you the options that you have for changing the colors. And what I always try to do is make sure that all the colors are kind of even out and they kind of all work together in a nice way. Um, so for example, the oranges, if I boost the oranges, you can see all the oranges are boosted. If I boost the reds, you can see only the red thing is boosted. If I do the greens, the same thing happens. So I thought that the oranges from inside the building, for example, and on these rocks were a little bit too strong. So I just pulled that down a little bit and that's kind of all I did here. I then thought that the, um, the greens could have been a little bit more yellow to maybe fit more into the rocks so if i pull this in here you can see that they go more yellow and red and here they go a bit more into the blues so i pulled this down a little bit um, i then also adjusted the oranges and this actually changed um, mostly the color of the of the girl of her jacket um, to be a bit more in the red color and it also made these rocks a little bit more red which I quite liked as well so um yep so then the first the last thing I did you can of course go for all these if you want to but the last thing I did was just add a little bit of a vignette which just pulls in the frame and really makes it feel like we're inside of a woods and pulls um, the constant the focus into here and like I said I probably should have put her about here but never mind so that's that Right, the next thing I did was work with this gloss and there are many things you can do with this gloss and what this does is it shows all the highlights and as we wanted this to be quite a wet scene, that works quite nicely. Um, there are different things you could do. You could set this to screen, which only highlights the white areas and completely ignores the blacks. So you can see all the things are highlighted, but I think I wanted to use soft light 
And these areas are mostly used for contrast. And I think that setting it to, to soft light really adds a nice contrast to the scene. And I just realized that it's made a really nice, like, like it's raining effect from my fog. Right, but I think that that is a little bit too strong, so I'm gonna set that to 40. Right, there we go, so now we have this. Um, before I move on to the further adjustments, I do want to add a background. So what I did was, if you go to pexels.com and just type in hill, oh, uh, <laughs> type in hill, you can get all of these images and most of them are completely for free. So this is just an incredible pack and I basically scrolled through here and found some images, went through until I found some images which I quite liked. Okay, so I found the picture which I have used and it looks like this. And it's made by this guy here, so I'd recommend you check him out. Um, and once you've downloaded this image, if you want to use this image. Okay, so I've dropped this image in now, so I'm just going to lay it uh, so it's roughly going to be at a, at a nice height. So we can kind of see some trees poking through and <clears throat> not so it's high enough that we can actually see that there is water. So I'm going to put it somewhere like this. Okay, and we do notice that there is actually uh, some gap at the top, so that's quite easy to fix. Let's just add another layer and then press B. I'm going to hold down Alt and right click to make it a bit bigger and then move the mouse up to make it softer. Press I, click on that and then go back to B and then we can just paint in the top. So that works quite nicely, something like this. Okay, but we do notice that the background is maybe a bit too bright. So what I'm gonna do is add a, a layer here and go solid color and set that to white. And then I can just adjust the opacity to make it so that it looks like there is a fog in the background. So like that. The next thing I actually added was some birds. Right, so I've grabbed this image, which is also from pexels.com. I think I just typed in birds and it's one of the first that came up. Right, but what I wanna do is actually get rid of the background. So what I can do here is press W to get the wand, click on the background, and because it's all gonna be mostly one color, it allows me to make quite an easy mask. And then I'm gonna go down here with this layer selected and press this button here. So now it's inverted. So I'm gonna click on this mask and do control I, and then we have almost a perfect mask for these birds. So then what I can do is press B and grab the brush and just paint away the ones which I don't want. Right, so then I'm left with something like this, which uh, looks like this mask here. And I just wanted a few birds to create a nice effect. But we do want these to also be, aff be affected by the fog. So let's just bring this up on top. And now they are kind of hidden away. So now they really fit into the image. Right then, so that's kind of the main um, parts of the image done. So now we can start working on some more fine tuning effects and things. So that's where th these further adjustments will come. Right, the, the first thing I want to do is make, the, make it so that this grass is even more affected by the glossiness. Um, because I want this to have like a bit more of a reflective feeling, maybe feel like it's a bit more morning dew feeling. So the, the grass feels a bit more wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one and bring this up to the top and bring it to the adjustments layer. We can also make that red. And then I'm going to set that to screen because we did see earlier that that screen is a bit more of a stronger effect. But what we want to do is actually create a mask for just the grass. And actually we have a mask here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it visible. I'm going to hold down control. So the little square appears when I hover over this. I'm going to click to select everything, do control C. And now I have that mask copied. Now I'm going to go back to this one. I'm going to create a new mask. Then I'm going to hold down Alt and click into here. So I'm now into the mask and do control V. So now I've literally just pasted this into here. And now we can see that I have a mask for just this. So we can see if I turn this off, holding, holding down shift, you can see that the, that the reflections are applying to everything. Whereas if I turn this off, then they are no longer applying to everything. But we can see on the grass that there is still some effect, but I do actually want to set this to screen actually. Right, there we go. So now we can actually see it properly. So. You can see it's a very bright effect and now a little less effect, but now this grass does feel a little bit more wet. So I think that's a nice feeling, almost like there's uh, spider webs. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is actually make this uh, metal a little bit darker because I want a little bit more contrast. So create a levels. Right, so I wanna get this mask. I'm gonna do control and click and do control C Turn this one back off. I'm going to go back to this layer, do Alt and click, and do Control V. Right, so now I have a levels for just the cabin. So now I can adjust this cabin to make it kind of any color that I want. But what I want to do is just pull this in a little bit to maybe something like this, and then maybe make this down a little bit as well. So now we can see the cabin has a little bit more contrast, which I think is a little bit nicer. 
Okay, the next thing to do is I'm going to do start doing some patching. Oh, I also noticed there's a mistake. So this door also needs to be affected by the levels. So what I'm going to do is just grab the brush and um, press I, copy that color, and do B and just paint in quite roughly. That will be fine. There we go. So now the door is also being affected. Uh, right, so the next thing is I want to do some patching to fix anything like these things here because this is a little bit too bright for me. It doesn't really fit. So what I'm going to do is add a new layer, press S to get a stamp, then hold down Alt and then click where I want to copy from. So probably this bit. And I'm going to move up to here and just paint this in as if it's continuing this, this bit here. So now we have something that's a little bit less in your face. Right, the next thing I want to do is that the next thing that's annoying me is that this green is not the same green as here. And I know that it's moss and it probably is going to be a slightly different color, but I think that it would look a little bit better if this was a more similar color to the grass. I think it would all more flow a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rocks mask. I'm going to do control click, control C. I think there is actually a quick way of doing this, but I cannot remember. Um, I'm going to turn that back off. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to add a hue saturation, then I'm going to alt click and paste that mask in there. Then with this one in here, you can see that I'm just now adjusting the contrast, the saturation of just the rocks, which is pretty cool. But what I want to do is I just want to affect the greens, or I think then is that more going to be the yellows? Let's, let's try the yellows. And then we can adjust this here. There we go. So if I just pull that down already, you can see that that fits a lot better. This works much nicer. So I'm going to leave that one on. Right, the next thing I want to do is start adding some smoke. So I'm going to make some new layers for these because it's going to be a bit easier um, and because I want something to come out the chimney. So what I did also went to Pexels and I found some nice smoke. Right, so what I've done is I've grabbed this uh, this smoke from Pexels and I've actually just used a warp um, to warp it into the direction where I want it to go. But I want it to make it look like there is actually smoke blowing uh, this way. So I've just done that warp and then applied that. If I place that roughly in the place where I want it to be, and then I'm going to set that to screen, and then set that to 70. Actually, I'm going to try overlay. So I think that'd be a bit stronger. But we do still we do still see though uh, the black bits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a levels, and I'm going to press this button here, or you can hold down Alt and click this button. So whatever applies here, if you turn this one off, this one also turns off, and this one is only affecting this this actual image. So what I'm going to do here is just pull up the white to try to get rid of the blacks. Something like this. Um, something like that. There are, there are other ways to do it, but this kind of worked fine for me. So then I have another smoke, which I've just applied on top, which it just looks like this. And I've just set that to screen and 53%. Right, with this smoke completed, I also want another add, add another smoke, which is going to come out of this chimney, and it will kind of be blocked by this building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this one, and then I'm going to move this over roughly to where I want it to be. So imagine the smoke comes out about here. Maybe something like this so we can actually see it a little bit. And we want to block it by this. So we want to create a mask, and there is already a mask created. So if I hold down control and click, I've created the mask. Now if I go down here and click on this button with this selection active, click that, it automatically creates the mask. But it's backwards because we can only see the smoke inside the building. So if I click on this and do control I, now the smoke is appearing everywhere except the building. So there we go. Uh, I also noticed that these masks are not actually completely white. So I'm actually just going to I'm actually going to adjust these. With this one selected, I'm going to do Control L and just uh, pull in the blacks like that. Right then, and I think that we are finished. I think that's it. I hope you're able to follow along. Um, maybe I do actually do a more dedicated video towards what to actually do with different passes and, and what blend modes to do. But um, for this particular one, I hope that you're able to maybe use these the gloss a little bit more and learn how to use these masks a little bit more. Um, but to show a comparison, if you want to see how this would look um, without anything else. So this was the original render, and then this was the final render. And I hope that it also makes it look a bit nicer to you as well. I think that post-production, as I always say, is often forgotten about. Oh, this could also, this. I think this should probably be a bit over a little bit. But yeah, a post-production is often forgotten about, but it actually can really push your image to the max. And please don't forget to use post-production. Of course, you can do a lot of this stuff in the compositor in Blender, but 
Photoshop is dedicated towards this particular thing. So, you know, this will do a much better job and you can fine tune a lot of stuff. Okay, so I think that we are finished and I, I really hope to see other people's versions of this. So please use hashtag iMesh on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, because um, I would love to see uh, what people have done. I've seen uh, other people creating renders with our other tutorials and I think it's incredible. It makes me feel like this is all worth doing. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you again soon. Hello and welcome to this. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Requested video that I've had since making this YouTube channel. So I'm making the tutorial now. Here we go. <laughs> no, so. <laughs> Hello, I'm welcome to this. I need a new chair. Hello, and welcome to this iMesh video. And it's going to be a tutorial, in fact. Um, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Now exterior renders can come in all si exterior renders can come in all sites exterior renders can come in all sizes exterior renders can come in all types exterior renders can come in all types of so exterior renders can come in all types of sizes and sizes exterior renders can come in all exterior renders can come in all types of sizes Exterior renders can come in all types of um, Exterior renders can come in all types of shapes and sizes Yes, yeah, so uh, th uh, um, not a <laughs>